And welcome everyone inside the Riverside County Board of Supervisors Chambers for the Riverside County, the board brief as we briefly sum up what happened in today's Board of Supervisors meetings and just the latest news across Riverside County. A special treat today because we have the chair of the Riverside County Board of Supervisors, Supervisor Karen Spiegel joining us. And Supervisor Spiegel, obviously a topic that we're all concerned about and was brought up today during the meeting was fentanyl. We had several people speaking on it today because it's going to take a lot of different departments and agencies across the county to make sure that we combat this. Is that correct? Absolutely. This is something that has been rising and suddenly it's escalating. In fact, since 2016, we've had an 800% increase in deaths of fentanyl. In fact, we are on track in 2021 to have four to 500 deaths just from fentanyl. And again, it's multi-agency. We have departments across the county pitching in, lending their talents to make sure that we, we strike this as hard as we can, right? You know, it's really about awareness. Mm -hmm. People don't realize how deadly fentanyl is. You know, we hear about opioids and you hear about all that's being done, but fentanyl, if you look at fentanyl, it's two milligrams is fatal, can be fatal. And yet, in one teaspoon, there's 5,000 milligrams. Can you imagine how much damage one teaspoon of fentanyl can do? And then, of course, you know, our children, our youth who aren't even aware of this. And what's more important, their parents aren't. And so this, what we did today was talking about scheduling and setting up and doing all this for a campaign, just mainly on awareness. Because we don't want to do it after the fact, because our DA is working hard to call this homicide. But we want to get this so that we don't have those deaths. We want to make sure that people are aware how deadly this is and how can we overcome this with our, with our students in the schools, with our adults, with everybody to say this is a deadly, don't mess with it. Uh, Supervisor, you brought up the DA uh, District Attorney, Mike Hestron, who was here at the meeting today talking about how deadly fentanyl is, but also those households where they have the illegal drug and they also have kids. So here's District Attorney Mike Hestron earlier today in the Board of Supervisors meeting. Since 2016, from 2016 right, to 2020, good. we've had an 800% increase in the number of fentanyl-related deaths in Riverside County. So in 2016, we had two fentanyl-related deaths. In 2017, we had 25. 2020, we had 227. And unfortunately, we're on pace for about 450 to 500 fentanyl deaths in 2021. It's getting worse. It's doubling every year. So obviously, we need to act. When you have a home where there's drugs, illegal drugs being used, it's always a danger to children. But as you, as you said, Supervisor Spiegel, such a small amount of fentanyl is fatal to the human body. And, and children are unfortunately ingesting this accidentally. And, and they're, they're dying. Big thanks to Supervisor Karen Spiegel, the chair of the Riverside County Board of Supervisors, for joining us live here on the board brief, speaking more about fentanyl. Now, at the very beginning of the Board of Supervisors meeting, we were talking about uh, drowning awareness and prevention. And we had Dr. Michael Masiska joining us here, uh, also Kim Sarwatari, the director of public health for the county of Riverside, um, talking about whether you're at the beach, the lake, a, a pool in your backyard, that it's going to take all of us to be aware, especially with the children around a body of water. So here is Kim Sarwatari speaking during today's Board of Supervisors meeting. Francisca, just to drive home the point, just wanna highlight some of the, the numbers that we've seen in Riverside County and nationally. Nationally, we have over 4,000 deaths reported um, on an annual basis due to accidental drowning. So it's not a minor issue. It really is, as Dr. Masiska mentioned, preventable. Those 4,000 deaths shouldn't happen. Um, so in Riverside County, uh, we know that in 2020, there were 81 non-fatal drownings and 32 fatal drownings, and that was in Riverside County. Of the 32 fatal drownings, six were children and 26 were adults. If we look at 2021 so far, so just through uh, mid-June, there have been 40 non-fatal and 19 fatal drownings. Um, and in, if we look at the breakdown of those fatal drownings, 14 have been adult, 
five have been children. So we're already on track to surpass last year's numbers in Riverside County, and we haven't even hit the summer yet. So it is, is an alarming trend. We wanna make sure that we're highlighting this, bringing awareness to the communities, um, giving them tools to promote water safety, yeah, water safety, obviously something we want to remind everyone about because we're all going outdoors once again. It's summertime and we're all hanging out by the pool or heading out to the beach. Now, also this weekend, it's the 4th of July on Sunday. It's Independence Day and I know a lot of folks are going to be getting together and celebrating the 4th. And we want to make sure that you're aware of what the current law is in Riverside County. And our slogan right now is, if you light it, we'll ride it. You will be fined if you're using illegal fireworks in Riverside County. And much like the fentanyl um, with illegal fireworks, it's taking multi-departments across Riverside County to really drive home this point. Sheriff's Department, uh, Fire Department, County Fire, um, also Public Health, Code Enforcement, all joining forces to make sure that you're aware of illegal fireworks in Riverside County and how to report it if you do see illegal, illegal fireworks. So here is... Uh, Riverside County Fire Chief Bill Weiser, along with our Chief Executive Officer Jeff Van Wagenen, more on these illegal fireworks. This last weekend, I went to a CAL FIRE and um, our State Officers of Fire Marshals uh, checkpoint that we were up north of Baker. Uh, we've had uh, two of those. Um, during those two weekends, we had 923 traffic stops, 215 citations, three arrests. Uh, 79,411 pounds of fireworks confiscated and seized, or 39.7 tons. Uh, that was just over a short time as that comes from Pahrump into the Inland Empire. Last year, in 2020, as you realize, we had 135 fires that day from fireworks. Um, it started 115 acres, a little uh, under that 114.7, I believe, but about 115 acres of, of wildland. Assistant Sheriff Sharp said they can, uh, you can go on the Sheriff's website. You can also use the Sheriff's Department app that is available in the app stores from all of the different providers. And you can call the non-emergency number that is 1-800-950-2444. And I should add, Fire Chief Bill Weiser added, that if you would like to see fireworks, there are plenty of legal fireworks shows across Riverside County this upcoming weekend, so check out one of those. And finally, in this board brief, let's take a look at some video from earlier today during the meeting. Rob, let's go ahead and roll that as we had a proclamation and a celebration of one of our longtime employees for the county of Riverside. That would be Pam Elias going on 41 years in Riverside County. That is four plus decades um, in the auditor controller's office. Uh, she was the I want to get this right. I think it's the property tax division chief. That sounds exciting. And she's been there uh, over 40 years with that department. And again, a special proclamation and a little bit of recognition for Pam, who her last day is technically going to be tomorrow. Tomorrow will be her last day with the County of Riverside. We caught up with her after the Board of Supervisors meetings, uh, meeting to get her thoughts on retirement. Here's Pam. Hi, my name is Pam Elias. I've been working for the County of Riverside for nearly 41 years. Today, and actually tomorrow, is my last day with the county. I'm sad to leave because I've been here so long and I've loved my job with the County of Riverside. I started here in 1980 and I just, uh, I've had many challenges and many opportunities. I've had great leadership working here. I've had great, um, there's great benefits, there's great staff, uh, lots of rewarding, uh, opportunities here at the county. I hope you decide to someday come and apply here because this is a great place to work. So. And congratulations on a well-deserved retirement for Pam Elias. Again, we're here after every Riverside County Board of Supervisors meeting with the board brief, bringing you the latest information from Riverside County. My name is Pep Fernandez, and we'll see you next time. Happy Fourth of July.